So you've probably come to this event today and seen all these different steam engines and you're wondering what they do and what they are. So we'll get these engines in and as they head round we'll explain a bit about what they are, what they do. You'll see there's different shapes, different sizes.
line for automotive vehicles in the UK. Sentinels, however, they mastered the mass production line for steam wagons. They were originally based in Glasgow and they established that the delivery journey for their steam wagons was so long that they decided to move their entire factory to Shrewsbury. This particular engine, or steam lorry, was one that was built at Shrewsbury and she's what's called a DG6 in that she's double geared and she has six wheels. What's slightly unusual about the engine is the big chain drive that you can see underneath the back that drives the rear wheels. This engine has a few unusual kind of facets to its history. It's the only steam engine here at the rally today that during its working life had life rafts and life buoys attached to it. And when it was working for Aberdeen Harbour Board, at one point it actually had divers working off the back of the steam wagon. So the next engine coming round is the miniature. And this is a uh, four inch scale replica of a Foden J-type articulated wagon. Now, you see modern lorries on the road, and they have an Arctic trailer to them. This is the predecessor to that. However, you couldn't just detach the trailer like you can with modern lorries. Uh, to be fair, there's only one surviving Foden J-type in preservation, and I think that probably tells you how uh, successful they really were. Okay, the next vehicle we've got coming around is the Roby Tandem Road Roller. So, Lincolnshire was very famous for its manufacturing of steam engines. We had Robies, Marshals of Gainsborough, uh, I'm going to think of the other one in a sec, uh, Clayton and Shuttleworth, somebody's waving at me and giving me a hint. Uh, so, uh, this Roby Tandem Roller is particularly unusual in that Unlike all the other steam rollers here today, which are what are called three-point rollers, in that they have two rolls at the back and one at the front, which gives them three points, this is a tandem roller, so it has one roll at the front and one roll at the back. Uh, this was uh, designed when tarmac was being brought out, and the design was basically to uh, allow the roller to quickly roll tarmac uh, on the roads. Uh, what's also particularly unusual about this roller is its boiler design. I'm an engineer myself, but uh, basically the boiler in the Roby Roller is what's called a pistol boiler, and it's particularly small, and it's in the shape of a pistol. So there you have a selection of uh, vehicles going around the arena. So, for those of you who are wondering, what did steam engines do in their working life? The first engine in the front, ploughing. The second engine, Deer's Piles, docks, piers, piles and groins. Uh, that was used for delivering stone, tipping lorry, just like your modern lorry of this day and age. Next along, we've got the miniature engine there that Mark Sorkins built. If you're interested in miniature engines, uh, if you head up into the Laundry Park field, which is in that direction, if you see my arm waving, you'll find there's a good selection of miniatures there. Uh, we've now got a late arrival, Tom Arnett's also in the arena, and this is a uh, miniature version of a Foden steam tractor. So the next engine we've got after Mark's J-Type is the steamroller, and the steamroller was used for rolling the roads. In the main parade, I'll tell you a bit more about steamrollers, what they do, and how they worked. And then the final engine, is basically a traction engine which most of you would know as to this day. During this parade, uh, I've also missed out a couple of engines that are represented here today. As you'll have walked down the field, you couldn't have failed to see Supreme. Supreme is the steam engine with the extra tall chimney between the arena and the castle. Supreme was the last ever showman's engine built in the United Kingdom. She was built by Fowlers for the Deacon family, and as a special order, instead of having brass twisted canopy supports, everything on the engine is chromed. Uh, please do go down and have a look. She's particularly fine and a pretty amazing exhibit to have here. Apparently, as I say, this, uh, if you read the programme, this was built to sink the Bismarck. Fortunately, uh, the Royal Navy got to the Bismarck first, otherwise I think it may have been quite safe. But uh, nevertheless, beautiful little launch. They are 
very special. So in other words, it's going to be a quarter size. If it's a four inch, it's going to be one third size. And if it's a six inch, like the Foden has just gone past with passengers on, uh, then it's a half size. And they make very manageable little, uh, I was going to say toys, but that's not the word I want, because uh, they're not toys at all. Problem because the, there were always a two-man crew on an engine like that, a driver and a fireman. And here we've got a little barrel coming past, a single crank compound barrel. Uh, now remember that when we talk about single crank, because we'll probably come back to that a little bit later on in our conversations. Uh, and then we've got a little barrel agricultural. This is a single cylinder engine. And uh, I don't know about his profession, but I think he may have something to do with the uh, chimney sweeping business. So, I say, there's, there's a small selection. I expect we've got a few more coming along uh, to join us. But a lot of these engines now you can buy as kits. In other words, uh, you, you can sign up with a manufacturer and you pay so much and they send you the first set of parts and you put that together. The cylinder block on this engine is particularly big uh, because uh, of the piston mounts. This engine initially passed into the preservation of the stone with the hard heat pan, the late form of hard heat was the predecessor and the founder of the Hall of Steel over 50 years ago. And he originally owned this engine. It was then sold from the northeast and ended up in a Coupland uh, sale down in England and then it was brought back up here to Scotland. So that's the wizard. Next engine coming around the rear here with Alfred Cheen Engineer Banff on the side canopies is the 1907, it's written on the back so I'll see it when it comes out. I think it's 1907. This is an RC10 uh, Avelingham Porter steamroller. The RC, uh, one of its strong lamps is stuck here on the front. We'll just bounce that back up again. Uh, the, uh, RC means that it's a R-type steamroller and the C means it's compound. So this engine has two cylinders. Uh, this particular engine spent its working life with Don Contractors of Inverurie. If you get a chance to go and look at it, the nameplate itself is particularly unusual in that you can see how little uh, uh, brass they actually used on the nameplate. And if you're a bit of a number plate geek, which I am, V is an Aberdeenshire number plate, so V8321 is a very early Aberdeenshire number plate. In the case of Dawnless, she actually started her working life in Lanark before she came up to Scotland. So, we've got a bit of an unusual selection of piston valve engines here, so I'm going to geek you a lot about these, because we think the largest ever number of piston valve engines are on the field here today. So, the next engine coming around, NO5892, is an Avening and Porter F-type piston valve roller. If any of you have Facebook and you're interested in learning about steam engine restoration, find the Facebook page Busters Return to Steam, and the entire restoration of this roller is chronicled blog style on Facebook. Uh, you'll also see my name appear because it's my roller. Uh, so, uh, this engine is appearing here today for the first time at the Castle Fraser Steam Fair with its original Essex County Council nameplate on it. And the engine's running around the arena here hauling a Baker water cart. So, when these engines were commercially used, You'd see them uh, uh, running on the roads doing work, and they'd need water to keep the boiler topped up. So you'll see that engine's holding, hauling 180 gallons uh, Baker water cart, and there's actually a hand pump on the water cart to fill it up. Uh, that particular water cart is a municipal parish water cart, and if you go to the Facebook page, you can learn everything you never needed to know about municipal water carts. So, I told you there, that's a piston type roller, that's an F type. Now, Avery and Porter were very good at standardising engines in the 1920s, and it took so long to design and get off the drawing board that somebody said, oh, I wonder if we can do something more useful with this, and they actually built the rollers as a stopgap. Uh, that particular engine spent its working life in Flint in Wales, and then ended up in Scotland uh, in the early days of preservation in Fife, 
and then is now based in the northeast of England. So the next stage you're going around is Moonraker, which is MR8277. Uh, if you're interested in the work that goes in restoring these engines, if you go to the craft tent, which is next to the beer tent, you'll find a sign writer is actually working on one of the parts of Moonraker in there, Sarah Jama. So if you go into the craft tent that's over there, you'll find somebody's working on that. So back to our pipes here. So we've got Moonraker, which is a B type. Then we've got Aisha here, which is a D-type. And then we've got Buster, my own lover, that's an F-type. So you're going to ask, what does B, what does D, and what does F mean? B means six tons, D means eight tons, F means ten tons. So we've got Aisha here. Now, if you look at Aisha as she runs around the arena, you'll see on her wooden toolbox is the three legs of the Isle of Man. Now, the family who own this, the Borthwicks, are a little bit crazy. Normal people take a motorbike to the Isle of Man and do the TT course. They went on holiday, took their steamroller, and this roller is one of the few steamrollers that has done the TT course in the Isle of Man. Now, I've also noticed a couple more miniatures have appeared. There is a red Fowler, nine inch, so that's two thirds sky steam lorry running around. And there's a couple of other traction engines running around in the middle as well. Uh, now, I'm gonna hand over to Andrew, who's gonna talk a bit about Sentinels. Thank you, James. Yes, well, Sentinels originally started life as Ali and McClellan up in Glasgow. And just over a hundred years ago, they decided to move further south to be closer to their traditional market, so they moved to Shrewsbury, uh, where I live. Well, not quite in Shrewsbury, but near enough. Uh, this is a typical product of the era, the chain drive double geared wagon. They built six wheelers as well as four wheelers, and also a few with two steering axles making eight wheelers. Sherman was rescued by a gentleman called Michael Salmon, uh, who was also known as a traction engine vet, uh, because he was a veteran surgeon in London, Dog Wells in Mid Wales, and he bought the engine uh, and rebuilt it initially and got it going. Next one round, we've got Atlas, this magnificent uh, heavy haulage engine. Now, Norman Box, whose name it carries, was the forerunner of Pickford's. Running round is an engine called Majestic, that's a green engine, that's an M-type Avon and Porter convertible, so that engine uh, in its working life could be a traction engine and a steamroller, that's uh, spent its working life in Fife with the SP number plate, uh, so that's over the far side. We've also got a Fowler DN1 roller, no it's DNA roller, uh, that's the bland of Gosford on the top of it. Uh, so the next engine we've got coming around is the engine called the Little Giant. That's the green Tasker here, uh, Wandering Willy. Uh, this engine is particularly, I'd say, got fairly local connotations. If you see any number plates here today, VA, AVSA, they're all Aberdeen number plates. So Wandering Willy here, which is the green engine, slightly unusual. She is a three-speed convertible chain drive tractor, and she was supplied new to Aberdeenshire Council in uh, Ellen was delivered by rail up here to Scotland with two trailers, complete with all of her old rowing gear. Uh, she passed it to preservation with the McConaughey family, uh, and uh, Jim, who's on the footplate there driving her, he has one of the original trailers that goes with the engine that comes to events. Uh, so Wandering Willie is the only surviving Tasker chain drive, four horsepower uh, tractor. Thank you James. Yes, we've got a lovely barrel road loco here. Now, we've talked about agricultural actions today with a fairly basic form of action. Then we went to the road locomotive, which was generally intended for the road road as well. We've talked about Atlas and Vanilla. This is a slightly smaller one. We moved to G and T Pitchley down in uh, Devon and worked for them for many years and eventually stood derelict in a shed. Uh, it was sold at auction down in Cornwall and Alfie Chain was fortunate to secure it and had it restored and you see it here today. Uh, these engines are fully sprung, uh, such as the springing on the steam engine. There is about an inch or two inches of movement. Uh, it's not very much, but it's better than nothing, believe you me. They also have rubber tyres and usually have a filled speed. 
uh, which makes them so much uh, quicker on the road. That engine might get up to the heavy speed of about 15 miles an hour at the sprint. Uh, and that's quite fast enough, bearing in mind that your only form of brake is a little block rubbing on the inside of the back wheel, which takes a moment or two to put on. That's followed by a nice little labelling tractor. There you can see uh, on for many years by Tom Middlemas, uh, just over the fourth there in East Lothian. So what Mr. Burrell and his engineers did was they said, well, we think we can come up with a clever compound steam engine. We were talking earlier about compound steam engines. Compound steam engines are compound where they use the steam once in the high pressure and then use it in the low pressure. The thing that's clever about Billy and following Betsy is that they're single crank compounds. So they have one crankshaft with one big end and both pistons are attached to the same connecting rod. So that was patented by Bowles, which prevented any other engine manufacturers making single crank compounds. Surprisingly, they're one of the most uh, uh, economical traction engines around and are very popular in generation. We're quite lucky here today that we have three barrel single crank compounds running round the field. So that's Billy. Following Billy is Betsy. This engine last appeared at a Bonacord steam engine liver club event 47 years ago. I wasn't born 47 years ago, that's slightly concerning. Uh, so uh, that's this engine, that's Betsy running round. So she's another barrel single crank compound. Uh, Joseph, is she an eight horse? So she's a seven horse, is Billy a seven horse? Six. So Billy's a six horse, this is a seven horse, and Validus, which is the other barrel single crank compound, is a seven horse as well. Sir William worked for Ilford Urban District Council, Buster worked for Essex County Council, and their two depots were next to each other in Ilford. Slightly surprising that in preservation they both find themselves in Scotland. Next going round here we have Wee McGregor. Uh, Wee McGregor was actually built as a steamroller and spent her working life in Ayrshire and then in the early days of preservation uh, had the front rolls removed and replaced with traction engine tyres. So the next engine we've got coming round, I think we touched on this earlier, that's the Aveling B-Type and then following that uh, this engine, uh, the Ransom Sims and Jeffries traction engine uh, from Ipswich, registration number BF5011, this engine Today is its first appearance at a rally ever in Scotland. Uh, the Webster family who own the engine have bought it in the last 12 months. This engine's had a fairly fantastic career because it was built new and shipped to Tasmania. Uh, on the other side of the world, spent its working life in Tasmania and then in the 1980s was brought back here for preservation, was restored in East Anglia, rallied there and has now come up here to Scotland. So this is the first rally that the engine's come to. Uh, you might think the coloured lining on the engine is a bit unusual, but Ransom's had that unusual colour scheme uh, from day one, really. Uh, now, the next engine I'm going to hand over to Andrew for, who's going to tell you a bit about the ploughing engine. Thanks, James. Yes, well, this is the Z7, built by John Fowler's in Leeds. This was the biggest size of engine they made. This is basically the same as Super However, uh, this was one of six that were originally repatriated in 1977 from uh, Mozambique, from the Santa Sugar Estates. Three enterprising gentlemen from the Boundary area knew all about these engines and went out there in 1975 and scouted out the land. They did a deal to buy six of these engines from the estate because they were then uh, lying idle and they went back in 1977 and started the recovery operation and they had to get them from the estate to buyer it to the port which involved, if you believe it or not, loading that engine onto a two foot gauge railway. So you imagine you've got a two foot gauge railway line uh, with this 10 foot 6 wide engine balanced on the truck on top of it. Uh, and they were able to make part of the journey by rail and then they had to tow them the rest of the way. They tied three together and towed them with a Caterpillar D8 crawler uh, to fire a port. 
uh, and they had a deadline because there was only one ship that pulled there that had the lifting gear capable of loading them onto the boat. And the easier it is to drive, really, as daft as it may seem. Uh, and the Z7 is a very friendly engine in all sorts of ways. On the sugar estates where they work, they set the ground out with a roadway about every 800 to 1,000 yards apart. And the engine stood on the road and worked the area in between. Well, if you think uh, that engine is capable of carrying 1,200 yards of wire rope, uh, which is over half a mile uh, in feet and inches, which I understand, uh, which is a long, long way. Uh, so very often they would be working out of sight of each other and would communicate purely by whistle. Uh, and the universal code for whistling is one long to stop, two shorts to pull, and three to drop the rope. Uh, Very good engines, had unusual features, uh, not very many made, but were highly regarded by the owners. Now the marshal that's just gone past, the Ilford Urban District Council, there's an opportunity there for you to have a look at an engine's boiler and the construction of the boiler, because that, I would think, has just had major boiler work done to it. Beautiful new rivets all around the throat plate. That's where the round boiler barrel is secured to the back half of the boiler. Now, engine crews, are we ready to blow our whistles? On the count of three. One, two, three. three! Enough. <laughs> okay, ladies and gents, now what we'll do, if you'd like to get uh, your photographs...